Hey guys, welcome back and thanks for joining us today on The King of Random. In the history of inventions, one of the greatest of all mankind is the ability to harness and control electricity. Some of the old experiments that taught us how electricity works are really incredible. In 1745, an early version of a capacitor was invented by Ewald G. von Kleist when he accidentally gave an electric charge to a medicine bottle. A year later, a man named Peter van Muschenbroek came up with the same invention while living in a city called Leiden. His version of the invention became a lot more popular and was named after the city and is now called a Leiden jar. At its most basic, a Leiden jar is an insulated container with an inside and outside holding opposite charges. When something bridges a connection between the two, the charges equalize and it creates an electric shock. The purpose of today's video is to learn how to build our own Leyden jar, charge it up using electricity, and then discharge it to get that electric shock. The materials we need for this build are pretty simple. We need a plastic bottle, some aluminum foil, a nail, and some tape. To build up our static charge, we're also going to want some paper towels and a length of PVC pipe. This one's about three feet long. The exact length isn't important. We've gathered up all of our supplies, now let's get started. You can use most any type of plastic bottle for this experiment. I prefer the type that has straight walls because we're going to be wrapping aluminum foil around the bottle and it's easier to wrap evenly with straight walls than if it has a lot of curves in it. First, empty your bottle. Next, let's remove the label from the bottle. It might work just as well with it still on, but I think it gives it a cleaner look if we take it off. Next, let's tear off a piece of aluminum foil approximately the same length as the straight portion of our bottle. Let's see if some of the glue residue on the bottle will stick to the foil. Oh, it does, that's brilliant. If your bottle doesn't have sticky residue, you can roll it up just the same way. It doesn't need to be stuck to it like that. We have a little bit extra foil. I'm just going to trim it off. With our foil wrapped around our bottle, let's secure it in place with a couple of pieces of tape. There you have it. We now have a nice conductive coating on the outside of our insulative bottle. Fill your bottle almost all the way with water, leaving a gap at the top of about an inch or two. 100% pure water actually won't conduct electricity, but most tap water has enough minerals and impurities in it that it will. But just to be sure, let's add a pinch of salt to make sure that our water conducts electricity very easily. It should only take a pinch, you really don't need much. There you go, with the salt mixed into the water, we now have a very conductive liquid inside the bottle. Now the last step in building our Leyden jar is to drive our nail down through the center of the bottle cap so that a portion of the nail is sticking up above the bottle, but some of it is also sticking down into the salt water. You can see that the bottom of the nail is submerged in our salt water. This will allow a good electric current to flow from the nail to the water. And just like that, your Leyden jar is built. This is now a device that for some time can hold an electric charge unless something conductive connects the nail to the foil. With our Leyden jar complete, it's time to charge it up using static electricity. A very easy and consistent way to build a static electric charge is using paper towel and PVC. Before we start using our PVC, let's clean it off using some high grit sandpaper to be sure that it's free of any oils or dirts or residue. You can see that the sandpaper is so fine that it doesn't even actually take off any of the printing on the pipe, but it is removing some extra residue. Now take a piece of paper towel and run it along the length of the PVC pipe quickly. This will help build up a static electricity charge. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's building up a charge fast. All right, with the static charge built up in our PVC, it's time to transfer it into our Leyden jar. We'll do this by just passing the PVC pipe very close to the nail. It sounds like if you've rubbed a balloon on your hair, or if you've ever had one of those old CRTV screens, right, when you turn it off, it makes that crackling noise. I've now charged up the PVC and put that electricity into our Leyden jar five or six times now, so I think it's time for a test to see if it will discharge. The nitrile gloves are gonna to be too much of an insulator, so I'm gonna take them off, try grabbing the foil, and then touching the nail to see if I get a shock. Oh, I got a shock just from the foil. That's not how it's normally supposed to go, but it's probably a good sign. We'll find out, I don't know. That was a little bit, a, a little bit of a shock, and I jumped too hard just because I was nervous about whether or not it would be powerful. Um, I think it was probably not a good idea to keep the PVC pipe so close to the bottle. It might have still 
had some interference with the electric fields. And it also is possible that I had just inadvertently built up an electric charge in the foil itself. And then when I first touched that, it discharged a little bit. So let's try this again. All right. And it shocked me again. I wonder what's going on here. Well, I'll still try touching the nail. Yeah, it still got me again. It is working to some extent. I'm able to hold the foil and I get a zap when I touch the nail, but it's also zapping me a little bit when I grab the foil in the first place. So I'm going to try taking the foil down by about an inch just in case the static charge from the PVC is also jumping onto the foil as I pass it next to the nail. I'm gonna try and move it away from the nail a little bit. Okay, let's try charging this up again. There's five charges, and this time when I grab the foil, it's not doing anything to me. Let's see what happens when I touch the nail. Oh, that was definitely a bigger shock. All right. I think what's been happening is the foil itself has been building up something of a charge. And since I'm standing on the ground, when I touch the foil, that charge runs through me. But when I hold the foil every time as I charge it, it keeps the same charge as me, which is a greater difference from the charge inside the water. That makes it so when I touch the nail, it gives a bigger shock. Last time, I charged it five times. This time, I'm charging it 10. All right. Here goes nothing. Let's see what it does to me. Oh, oh boy. Okay, so last time I felt it in my arm. That time, I felt it in my whole body. Like, it went, like I felt it in my other arm and down through my legs and just, oh, there's a big old jump. All right, that's pretty fun. It doesn't actually hurt. It's just like a pulse that goes through you. All right, well, that's working pretty well. Something else I wanna try though, I'm gonna turn down the lights and see if we can actually watch the electric spark jump. Oh, I saw it. I hope it was on camera, because that was another good jolt. Tiny little spark. It didn't have a big gap to jump over, but it was there. Something I'm going to try to see if we can make it a little visible. I'm going to hold another piece of metal before I touch it, instead of touching it directly with my fingers. It might jump the gap a little bit better that way. Good. Well, it didn't really jump the gap. I still had to touch the foil to the nail, I think, but I still did see a spark. And when I touched it with my finger, it looked like a yellow spark. Touching it with the foil, it looked like a blue spark. No idea what the difference is. There we go, we've charged up our Leyden jar using some PVC and paper towel, but I wanna try and take it to the next level. In a previous video, we shattered a plasma globe while it was running. Now we're going to try using this plasma globe to see if we can charge up the Leyden jar with it. When this is turned on, if a piece of metal gets near the bulb, you can still see that purple spark showing up. I'm gonna to try touching it with my glove. Oh, it's like doing pretty much nothing. Oh, it's still getting the spark though. Oh, it's starting to heat up just the tip of my finger. Let's see if it... It doesn't really give you a shock. It gets warm, but it doesn't, like just this is a lot more of a feeling of electricity. Well, let's see what happens if we touch this to our Leyden jar. Well, it's sparking, kind of like when I touch my finger to it. I don't know if that's building up the charge or not. Let's just let it go for a second and see what happens. Oh, it smells like ozone. Wow, that's kind of powerful. Well, that seems like plenty of charging to me. Let's see if it did anything. No shock from touching the foil. Nothing, nothing whatsoever. I kind of thought it would do something. Oh well. Well, whatever electricity is coming out of that, it doesn't seem to charge our Leyden jar. So I think the best way to do it is just stick with the PVC. I was kind of hoping it would be like a quick acting charge, just zzz, full. Oh well. Whew. My favorite thing to do is you get this bottle, charge it up pretty well, about 10 passes, then you get a group of people. Have one person hold the bottle on the aluminum foil and have everyone hold hands in a circle. Then you have the last person in the circle touch the nail and everyone in the circle will feel the jolt run through them. It's pretty entertaining. There you have it. Now you know how to build yourself a Leyden jar, which is an early type of capacitor. 
A capacitor is similar to a battery, except that instead of discharging its electricity slowly, it dumps all of it at once. This Leyden jar capacitor is made just by using a plastic bottle, some aluminum foil held on with tape, and a nail. It's then filled with water, with a little bit of salt added for conductivity, and charged up using the static electricity generated with PVC and a paper towel. This is something you can easily build in an afternoon and have fun experimenting with. Or you can just use it to prank people and tell them to touch it and see if you can get them to do that without knowing what's going to happen. They'll be in for a surprise. We tried charging up our Leyden jar using our broken plasma globe because it does discharge electricity in some form, but apparently it's not anything that will charge this up. If you know of a good experiment that you can do with a Leyden jar, let us know down in the comments and we might try it out. Thanks for joining us for this project today and we look forward to the next one. Talk to you then. This might be a very dumb experiment. I've charged it a little bit, just did three passes. And you see what happens if I lick the nail. Just a tiny little zap on the surface of my tongue. Didn't do much. I don't really want to do much more than that. It sounds painful. Hey guys, I hope you're having a great day. You are awesome, you are appreciated, and I know everyone over here on my team is really grateful for you. Thanks so much for choosing to watch and support our videos. We'll see you in the next one.